Hey everybody, it's uh, Wednesday, September 18th, and this is my messy garage. That used to be a table saw until it became a table. So we've been talking about um, my multiplex electrical system stuff. This is the fried um, accessory expansion module, I guess it's called, expansion module that uh, I showed earlier and it's all melted inside. Let me just pull the lid off here just for the shits and grins, okay? And uh, as I was saying before, none of these circuits on this thing were used anyway, so I just completely removed it and I removed the, the wiring harnesses for it. And everything seems to be working okay. Um, I've got this one. This is my chassis module. This is the one that had water in it. Uh, I don't really remember where I left off. It's been a few days. But I'm going to reinstall that thing. I got my dielectric silicone compound grease I bought from Napa. $9 and something. I'm sure it's way overpriced. So we're going to prep this thing. And we're going to install it. Uh, well, what I did with this... Since I knew that some moisture had gotten into this plug, I wanted to make sure that there was no moisture that had made its way inside this container, this housing. All right. So what I did is I I took it out of off the bus and I put it on a windowsill where the sun was beating on this black plastic, and I had it set up like this. And every one of these pinholes down there is open into the housing so it, it I ventilated is basically what I did it was standing straight up I'm sure there was some bit of circulation from the, the heat causing the air inside here to rise out here right and a couple times I just blew in here with my mouth or actually I didn't blow in I sucked the air out of this through here so uh, while it was, this was in my house, which is air conditioned and pretty dry, I was sucking in some dry air and it, you know, I don't know, I'm overkilling the shit out of it probably. But, uh, so, I mean, all right, I had intentions, hold on, let's set this thing down over here. I had intentions of coming up with some kind of a, a drip guard or something. I'm going to show you where this stuff is. Because again, I don't remember. Oh, look at there. Quarter inch nut from something. Quarter 20. Oh, that's probably what held that computer in place. So, I'm right behind the front wheel. Alright, there's the front wheel. And there's my fender. Right here. And up there... Uh, that's the floorboard hole right there where these wires are coming through and that right there is the transmission computer module so I really honestly don't know how water got into my chassis module unless you know it was dripping down around the hood I mean, this is very well shielded. Now, granted, now here's another view. So there's my the back of my front tire, and this is about equal with the axle right here. This is my fender skirt. So while driving through rain, this is the inboard side. Here's my chassis, and up there, there's openings, right? So this whole area is come, going to be completely mist and just consider it like a hurricane. And up in there, right there, that's where these computer modules are. So now I haven't driven this bus for a year and a half. So there's, I just don't understand how the moisture got into these plugs, which actually I just bumped in there, they're hanging here. I got all this just sitting here, 
hanging loose waiting for me to work on it but I guess if I wanted to overkill this thing I could put some kind of a shield but I don't know I don't know how I could even freaking do this I mean it'd be great if I had these things shielded really well I mean mentally where I'm at right now what I want to do is I would like to pull these plugs off of this transmission control module and make sure that they're well sealed with some silicone grease around the pins so um, backing up a little bit here hold on there's there's the chassis control module that goes here that I just showed you in the garage there's the studs that it sits on one two and there's another one over there then there's this transmission control module. All right. Here's some connectors and transmission, which I probably should check and make sure they're sealed up. So right, where is it? Right there, that flat piece of metal, that's where that, um, What the heck do you call it again? The ex extension module that fried, I removed from there. All right, right there. There's another one behind it. I'll show you that. Okay. All right, they all are identical with the same part number on them. All right, so I would also like to take these plugs out and make sure they're well sealed. I'm gonna do one thing at a time though. I'm not gonna to touch this computer module until I get the chassis module installed back in and reconnect the batteries and make sure everything's fine. Oh yeah, one thing I wanted to do, um, since I had cut that one computer module out that I fried, this is the data these are all the data communication cables all right there's a test there's a ground ground wire that's not being used there's a test that you perform and with the battery disconnected you read how many ohms resistance there is on the diagnostic the round nine pin port that's up under the dash there on two of those pins you should have 120 ohms resistance and that tells you that you've got this resistor on either end of all these data cables so at the last computer module in the bus there's supposed to be another 160 I mean a 60 ohm resistor and I, I honestly don't know I think I think there's another module back there for the analog brakes there's another there's an analog brake module on this bus somewhere um, I haven't found it yet I haven't looked for it yet so but if I could find a yellow green wire you know that would be I just I would just like to know what's going on in this bus so if something comes up right I'm gonna have a, a little bit better understanding of how to fix the damn thing um, actually gaining confidence in all this multiplex stuff I mean I'm pretty well versed in uh, computer diagnostics on automobiles and I've been through some training and I've got certifications and stuff on heavy-duty truck I've never um, actually worked on a heavy-duty truck uh, multiplex or any kind of a computer stiff uh, computer system although I imagine it's not really any different than working on a car but anyway yeah if I over oh, above that tank that might be where the analog brake module is. So I'm gonna like hang out down here for a while and do some contemplating and uh, I'm probably just gonna grease these things up really good the seals up in there and reconnect the damn thing. I mean it's lasted this long. It's a 2005 chassis. 2007 manufacture date on the bus. So, you know, that's that long. 
probably going to be fine if I grease up these terminals. So that's what's going on today. Uh, these darn videos sure take a long time to... I didn't even really work that hard, guys, to be honest with you, to try to splice and dice and... You know, I just hold my damn iPhone here. I don't have any tripods. I don't put up lighting usually because it's just so much effort. My hat's off to you guys that make and publish really great videos because uh, it is really hard. It takes a long time to uh, put these things through and compress them with the, the program on my, my PC computer. So uh, uh, any feedback you guys can give me, I really appreciate it. It mean, means the world to me when I can um, get some feedback. Let me know what you think. If, uh, if you like my approach, if you don't like my approach, uh, just a few words, man. I appreciate whatever you guys throw me a few words. All right, so let me get to work. I got my silicone grease. And I got my little Q-tip here so I can spread it around. And uh, I got some 226 electrical grade stuff that I'm gonna spray on my plugs and make sure they're all completely free of whatever. I'll probably use the straw for this silicone. And uh, yeah, man, that's about it. All right, so this is the transmission control module. Transmission control module, I guess. I don't know what that is. Delivery dudes. And that looks like, what, a two, one, six? I don't, I don't even know what that is. I can't even read that right. Alright, so it says don't ground by this symbol. There's a wrench in the house. I don't know what that means. Allison, R and G, red and green, I guess. So all these look perfectly like brand new in here, very clean. I don't see any dielectric grease. And I took some pictures of this. Just regular old straight pictures. So in case I need this information for something, I'll have it. Let me show you the plugs. So this is just an exercise in preventive maintenance, guys. That's what we're doing here. Making sure the stuff's in good shape. And it's not going to give me any trouble and it's a little scary to do because you know you could damage something in the process okay the R and the G is red and gray I guess so the way these things work is you squeeze these two together and you pull this back and then that gives you the capability of pushing in this connector. I mean, this little clip right here, so you can unplug it. You can see up in here, there's this orange. Those are the seals. And this one's like got a little bit of a fold to it. Like when it was inserted, the little edge folded a little bit or something out of there. I don't know why they don't put silicone grease on that seal. So anyway, it's good to know that that looks like it's in good shape. I'm going to carefully pull out these seals and put a light coat of silicone grease on the inside and the outside and then reinstall it onto the terminal uh, connectors. And then on this guy, what we're going to do, we're going to use a Q-tip and put a light coat of the silicone grease around the perimeter of this opening where the rubber seal sits. And then we're just going to put it all back together. That's all there is to it. And then I'll feel a little bit better about that. Alright, let me see if I can do this. I'm going to share with you what I just learned. Is these seals 
they don't want to come out. They kind of go up and over this plastic piece. And I don't want to take a chance in damaging the seal. All right, so what I'm going to do, I just got done blowing this out with compressed air to make sure the dirt was out of it. All right, so I'm going to take my Q-tip just like this and rub just the tiniest little amount of silicone grease on the lip of that seal on both of them and that's going to be it i'm not going to do anything else other than that okay they were sealed when i took them apart and they should be sealed perfectly fine when i put it back together uh, this is kind of over bright there with my flashlight but all right so those are just a bunch of pinholes looks like a very good quality connector these allison guys i'm sure they've got their stuff together Hopefully I can show this to you. So here's a better shot. You can see how the rubber, orange rubber seal in there is a little bit folded over on the corner there. I'm pretty sure that's because these things were, and right there in the middle, a little bit, because they were assembled dry. You know? So this one I already put the grease on it white one you see how it's got a little bit of a shine on that orange rubber piece all right, that's all I'm looking for just a little bit of grease on there to help the seal all right so let me grease up this this one here on the red plug and we're gonna start to put this back together all right so I took by the low ring pick tool here After I already wiped some grease on these seals, I noticed, you can see how there's like lips, multiple lips. The lips were all like stuck together. So I very carefully pried them apart. So now all the lips are unstuck from each other. And I'm gonna make sure I get grease, a little thin layer of grease in all those little openings so they won't stick again and that they'll do their job like they're supposed to and then we'll put it back together all right so i know you can't see this but i use my q-tip and i just put the slightest amount of grease on the inside of those port holes there so those seals will go right in there, nice and easy like. All right, so when I took this out, I left the connectors on and I worked it out from behind this into using this space and pushing this stuff out of the way, all right? And I pulled it down so I could see how these connectors would be disconnected. When I put it back in, I put the computer in there first, and then I just plugged them in, and then I pushed the little lock devices in place, and they're in there. The one thing that got my attention here is, when these connectors are connected, the plug actually wiggles. So those rubber seals, they need to stay kind of dynamic, I would think, all right? I don't know, unless maybe they're designed to just stick in there. But, I don't know, I like the idea of having the grease on the thing. So, hey, if it fails, it fails, whatever. But they're in there. I can feel that they're all the way in. I heard them click when they went all the way in, too. So now that I got it in, I'm going to put the mounting nuts back on the studs that look like this, but they're on the top side. There's one on the other side of that. There's one over here in this corner, and there's one in this corner. This is the hard one. I'll do that first. And one of these had a bracket on it that was part of holding these things. So I'm going to make double sure that this is very well secured so that there's no wiggling around and vibrating and working on these plugs and, and those wires right there. So whatever it takes, I'm going to make sure that I 
secure that very well, okay? All right, so here's what I've got done so far. Got my transmission computer completely installed. All the bolts are tight. I found this little bracket in the garage and that cable uh, clamp, 8L clamp. I don't know what the hell you ever call those things. And so now all these come wires, cable, whatever, coming out. Uh, there, that's better. These here don't have any stress on them. All right. So that's, I feel good about that. So that's all done. I got to put a nut the washer on here. And I still got to add another bracket. Where did it go? Uh, I don't see it. There it is. Hold on, guys. Kind of straining my ass off here. So I got this. This was originally in here, and they had it in between the computer and the bracket, which I didn't really like too much. I mean, the computer is resting on three pads, so it's not like it's putting it in a twist, but. So, I can't, I can't, I can't put that there. That's why evidently they put it in, in there. Actually, I think it was, yeah, it was on that one. And that's what held this wire and these wires. So I'm gonna have to do something a little different. I mean, I got choices, but I'm not gonna compromise. I wanna make this very secure. You know, like how this is, very secure, right? All right, so I've already greased up those holes and I really want to do this tonight. I don't want to take a chance of it raining overnight or tomorrow before I get home from work. So it's 8 o'clock now. I'm going to just stay at it. I probably got another hour here. I'm at least going to get all the cabling, you know, all the little plugged gaskets greased up, the little blue thing up in there, and plugged in. I may not get the uh, bracket figured out to hold all this stuff up off the spring, right? We got all this stuff up here. I wanna make sure that's nice and secure and everything is completely free from hazard. I've got another one of these brackets. I got a few of these and leftover brackets like this that one of them's got a great big hole in it. So I'm thinking I might be able to use it on one of these big fellas. Hey, look who just dropped in. Frog just fell off. Where did he go? I just saw him sitting right there. There he is. He's up there on the axle. <laughs> you jump on me and scare the shit out of me. I'm gonna be pissed. All right, so anyway, back to this. I've got all kinds of large diameter bolts up here that I could screw something on. And, uh, you know, I mean, I guess I could even use this, but I'll figure something out. It's just got to give me time. Okay. So I wish I could have showed you guys how I did greasing up these seals, but here laying on my back underneath the bus, the ski is biting me. You know, it's just too hard. So I wanted her to get it done for, uh, I mean, the, there's a little bit of a breeze picked up, and that's usually a precursor to rain. I'm looking out, I, I see clouds, but I don't see stars. So, I don't know. So, it's sealed up. So, water can work its way down into this connector. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that. But the rubber seal is now greased up on the inside and the out. And that's as good as I'm going to be able to do. So now I need to figure out how to secure this stuff. Now this guy here, I can just move that over there. So this is going to need, I don't know, what's going on over here. All right, so I could put a clamp on this to hold this up. All right, they probably had one. 
It's probably my fault that it ain't in there. But I still want to put something on this so these things are not swinging. You know what I mean? So I'm going to actually postpone anything really great here until uh, daytime when I can see better and when the mosquitoes aren't getting me uh, I could probably plant this in there and I used to be able to see that at all There's that bracket with the slotted holes in it and all the wire bundle stuff right there needs to be supported so it's not laying on the leaf spring right there. So that's pretty easy. At minimum I can put some tie wraps around it. So there's the transmission hose wire bundle. I'm going to put that on one side or the other of this thing. Probably pull it over like that it's just so it's out of the the way of things, I don't know. I'll figure something out. Hey, right there. Maybe I can clamp it to that. I don't know, one of them clamp deals. Alright, so it's coming together. You know, I put a ton of work in the underside of this bus already on twisting things and fixing clamps and making all these things go parallel instead of twisted. I mean, even the wires on the other side of the bus and these transmission lines all this stuff see the red tie wraps that's my work and those go over there to the alternator and there's an air compressor line over there it goes in my air dryer and a little you know, pop off line yeah so anyway i know i'm making some really crappy video here but i can't do any better than this yeah, all right, I'm done for the day. It's after 8.30, I gotta get cleaned up for work tomorrow. So, I still gotta figure out how I'm gonna secure this bundle. It's snug up there and I might just do it with tie wraps like that and maybe put it underneath this clamp right here, the tie wrap. I'll come up with something, all right? But let me show you what I just got finished doing. Just installed, oh yeah, right here, this clamp. All right, so all this wiring is no longer laying on my leaf spring. It's held up nice and high, up out of the way, all right? So, and this wire is for my transmission. It's got plenty of length. I was talking about it a while ago and I can probably use that that bracket right there and attach to to uh, support this guy a little bit better so there it is I wish I could have put some kind of a rain shield over the top of that, all that I've been there. But uh, I don't know, I guess there's still opportunity for that. Get a piece of rubber floor mat or something. Alright, so there's uh, looking straight up at the floor from the bottom. All right, guys, so uh, I was just digging through my little bag of leftover parts. They're, uh, they're actually leftovers from, from this guy. Oh, yeah, well, I've still got to get these little plastic latches installed on the bus. And uh, where they go, they go in the plug. This is just a... All right, great, got the doxies today. This is just a dummy plug uh, from this module that I removed. 
that was just in, in place to close up all the holes. No wires were on it, okay? But I thought I would take a moment and show you. I already took this apart because I can't do this and hold my phone at the same time. as. So I took my little hemostats or whatever you got and I pulled this little keeper plastic guy off the, the plug. And then I took my little O-ring tool pick and I pulled this seal out from in there. And you see the little ribs that this thing has? I kind of just filled those ribs with the silicone grease. Of course, I cleaned it all off before I did, did anything. Okay. Gee, now that I'm looking at this, it looks like these things have a top and a bottom. Unless that's just the way the ribs were pushed. Yeah, they're leaning over, I think. Anyway, then uh, with this thing nice and greasy on the ID and the OD, I would slip it back over that. Then I would take my O-ring tool and push it down just to make sure, right? Doing this with one hand. All right, guys, bear with me like that. Okay, this side needs to go down. Of course, with the grease, it was really slick and just slid right on there. And then with that done, take this guy and just push it back on. And then you're ready to, to plug, it, plug it up in there. And like I've already mentioned it probably a dozen times already, I smeared the silicone grease on the inside of this area using Q-tip. And then when this guy gets plugged on there, right so that clicks and then that little plastic gray plastic keeper that I was showing you in here slips in behind there so this can't squeeze and unlatch okay that's it